This is the beginning of every single video. Are we okay? Chris! <laughs> not working! <laughs> he always leaves after we start the live stream. But he waits because he knows. It's I there? Think... Yes, there you go. It's loading. Live now. It starts with, are we live? <laughs> That should be Chris says that should be the name of our show. Are we live? <laughs> <laughs> um Also, did you put it's it? It's loading. I don't know if it's my connection. It might be. If you take it off Wi Fi it actually might oh no, but you're in the middle of the the boondocks. Well, welcome everyone. I was just looking up my EIN number. Cause guess who finally got on Instacart? I think. I'm not sure. We're not sure. We're not sure. <laughs> We're not sure. <laughs> so we are Sasha and the cat, and we are back at it again today on this Monday. We're a little late. Sorry for anyone that actually tuning in. Um, we <laughs> are supposed to be live 20 mi 25 minutes ago, but we had some major technical difficulties. But we're super excited, as we think next time. We're going to have some fun overlays and little weight screens. We're going to jazz it up. Yes. So that'll be that. Um, but today we have a few topics for you. And we also um, are going to cover Halloween, time management, um, and branding materials so that'll be fun um, yeah again if you have any questions feel free to shoot them in the chat for Sasha or myself um, and we'll answer them in between topics and we hope you enjoy our our hangout as you work on Monday too and be productive yay so Sasha tell us about your um, Halloween. I don't really have one. You, you can fill in that part. Well, I guess, yeah, you had a post-Halloween. So I'll tell my corny Halloween. Yeah. The traditional Halloween. No! Your impressions were so, so good. They were so bad, which I think made them funny. Because they were so... They were so good! I think the second half, like you said, got better. I, did, I feel like I got more into it as I started doing it. In the beginning, I was like, right. and then also in the beginning, it was like scenes where the other characters are responding and there's no other characters. I feel like in the beginning, you were like, am I really doing this? Yeah. Yes. And, and then, like, towards the middle, you're like, I'm freaking doing it. Like, <laughs> I'm, right. I'm here. <laughs> I am Moira. <laughs> um... Well, then I was also waiting, basically I was like copying this 12 minute video, which is a very long video. When you think about a 12 minute video. Um, yeah. Of just straight impressions. Well, it's just scenes of her. And I was trying to wait for like some of the iconic lines and then they like wouldn't come up. Like she says, I am relevant. Like that's her, that's her line. And it, it wasn't in the video. And I'm like, okay, well I'm not just gonna half ass do this. So <laughs> I didn't do it. So Chris had a gig, right? So Chris had a wedding gig, um, which was not Halloween themed. And I'm kind of like, listen, if we're going to get married on Halloween, it's going to be Halloween themed. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. It was like a normal wedding, like no Halloween. I feel like maybe they got some candy as like a party favor. Yeah, okay. But, well. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's also Halloween is not like the best of colors. Like orange and black. Yeah. The wedding is interesting. But anyway. Okay. So I just um, did my, I dressed up as Moira. And if you all want to see what that looks like and what the impression reel looks like. It's, uh, you can go check it out at the Kids and Pieces or at my litter box. So, literally, my litter box. Literally, she's cat. My litter box. Heck. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
But then I took it off because I didn't want to, I wanted to give out candy to little kids that had come trick-or-treating, which is funny, I say little kids. I, I went trick-or-treating up until like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally saw what that looked like up from the other end. Like the last mm-hmm. trick-or-treaters we had were definitely like 20 year olds. I didn't care, I gave them really? candy anyway. <laughs> So yeah, how was that? Like, what type of age, age ranges were there? And like, were the costumes interesting or were they like normal? I mean, kid costumes are just so average. But I don't know if they were average because this year everyone was just like, whatever. Yeah. Um, but the neighborhood did something really cute. I didn't really go see it, but they, they at, at like 5 o'clock or something, a bunch of people lined up to give up candy in like the community area so that kids can get some candy because not every house in the neighborhood was like gonna give out candy and it's like a huge neighborhood Mm -hmm. so um and then there was a parade so the kids could like walk in a parade and show off their costume and then they showed Uh monsters inc at night um where i guess in like a projector parking lot type of thing but it was cold so i didn't go i was gonna go because you know i love that but i was like it's cold (laughs) yeah it anyway, always, like right around Halloween is when it gets like the coldest, and then after that, it's just like cold. Yes, I've noticed. I mean, there is some sun. I mean, it goes down by like five o'clock, but or like I know it just gets cold. Yeah. But anyway, the main point of this was I changed out of my costume into my Great Gatsby costume because I didn't want to say the little kids in case they were like, "Who are you?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm a character from Shit's Creek." So, <laughs> um. I put on my Great Gatsby costume, and I was also trying to be like, look at me, marketing, got my little mask on with my feather. <laughs> right, I saw that. That was so cute. Um, well, good, you got two outfits out of Halloween, that's great. But I honestly felt like I was, like, performing the whole day. I don't know if you've the, ever... Uh, giving out candy and stuff? Or just, like, dressing up, then going to take the photos. Oh, my gosh, it's already 4.30. Need to put together these candy bags. Okay, got to put on the other outfit. Go sit outside at 5.30 <laughs> till 7.30. And I was like, this is exhausting. And you know, when I sit outside, it's like I have to set up the candy. I got the music. I got my swing music going. I blew up a couple balloons. <laughs> I put but together candy that's bags. That's awesome. It's like... When you do something, you do it all the way. You're not going to half-ass it. So you are going to make it, like, costume change and, like, <laughs> But then after, I'm like, I am getting too old for this. <laughs> this is exhausting. Yeah, that is so much fun. Plus, with your background in theater, it's like, ding, 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 ding. tap into something you're comfortable with. Don't tell people that. They'll expect more out of my impressions, and there really isn't more. <laughs> I hope that they do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you okay. Have more. You have more. I don't have the chat up. Do you have the chat up, just in case? Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Yeah, cool. No, I don't. Well, thanks for anyone who's watching. Um, and, I don't have the chat up. Um, it's okay. I, I mean, get it up, but I have it too. So, yeah, so just to, that was the end of my Halloween. And I honestly, it was the first time I ever gave out candy, because usually I'm trick-or-treating. Um, oh, but... We have, like, a one of those, like, community chats, like, a forum. Like, whenever there's, like, a power outage or something, they'll be, like, community power outage. But then it's also a place. It's, like, freaking real Desperate Housewives. What is it called? No, it's just called Desperate Housewives. <laughs> it's not yeah. real. Desperate Housewives. Okay. It's, um, like, the real housewives. Yeah. Ones. All the housewives. So then <laughs> there's someone who had, like, a ring camera on their front porch. And they were like, I don't know whose kids these <laughs> the, um, these are, but this is like bad parenting right here. The, and then the two kids come up and just take all the candy in the bowl. Like you just see them going like this into their pumpkins. <laughs> like, but both kids, and I swear they did it, like it must have been like five handfuls. Like the, all, the entire candy bowl was gone. He's like five-year-old that's horrible i know so this go? guy like blasted that on that forum it was pretty great that's amazing <laughs> i was like this is like 
suburban drama, but I love yes. it so much. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. But yes. I love it. So that was my traditional Halloween. Sasha had a very interesting take on Halloween the following day. Yeah, the day of... Yeah, that was just a normal day. We just, like, hung out. <clears throat> and then, um... So, my freaking costume didn't come in for Day of the Dead, which is what I celebrated this year. Um, which you already know about. I won't get into that, even though I'm super pissed about it. So, I went to... I don't know about it! Day. I mean, I know about it, but you didn't tell me, like, what you ended That's up doing. That's all there was to know. Oh. I went to the post office to pick up the costume, and I had a note in my mailbox saying that the package size was too large. So they held it, and I have to go during business hours to pick it up. Whatever. Um, so I went to the Walgreens yesterday. Just, like, maybe they have, like, face paint or, like, something I can do for my face to, like, look like a skull or, like, you know, themed with Day of the Dead. So I went, and they had the entire, obviously, like, aisle for Halloween stuff 50% off. And I don't think the Day of the Dead stuff was supposed to be 50% off because it didn't scan that way, but he, like, marked it down anyway. So I bought, like, a bunch of little things um, just to put it together and kind of make it more, like, scenic and just to, like, transform the environment a little. It was very nice. Yeah, no, I, like, and I cleaned, like, the RV, like, a lot. Um, Does it feel good, though? Yes, it does, but it only lasts for, like, an hour. Yeah. And it's like back to being cluttered, but um, yeah, so I set up food, made Mexican food, and it was so good. Like, it was top notch. It was great. And they had these gluten free tortilla rolls, like um, burrito wraps. Tasted just like normal ones. Like, I was so surprised mm. at how amazing they tasted. Um, and I got like the little, like, um, crumbled cheese that Mexican food has. Like, queso fresco? Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd know the name of it. Because um, I love making then... that Mexican corn. <laughs> Yeah, I thought of that. Um, and I got these like little cute dolls. Oh my god, I have to show them. They're so cute. They're not dolls. Look at them. Oh my gosh, you found that at Walgreens? These were at Kroger. Everything else is at Walgreens. But look how they're little plants. I feel like I would keep that up all year. I'm going to. Like, it's amazing. Mm. And then this was, like, the other thing that I had. That was at Walgreens? This was at Walgreens. And then the mask I had was at Walgreens, which I was wearing the mask, but it was, like, suffocating me, so I took it off and used it as, like, a prop instead. Um, I love you yeah, how you so wore that, did. even at home. <laughs> I was like, screw this. I wanted to dress up for something. And then um, we got candles, and, like, the ritual kind of thing we did was light a candle for each person. And then we wrote on a piece of paper our favorite quality about the person that has passed or um, our favorite memory. And then you, like, put the pa- piece of paper with that candle and you just light it, light it on fire. And then after that, we blew out the candle. So it was just kind of like a meditative, reflective practice of, like, honoring the dead. And then we also did it because I read something about how the full moon was this weekend and stuff. And I read something saying how it's, um, it was a good idea to, like, also kind of celebrate Day of the Dead with, like, the dead parts of you and, like, stuff that has passed and, like, that you've, like, I don't know, experienced in the past and that you've, like, let go of. <clears throat> so we did that, too, and we wrote down um, different <laughs> things or experiences. Bless you. Sorry. Bless you. Um, and then we burned that in a candle and then, we looked, like, blew up the candle. But it was cool. It was fun. And Dakota got super into it. He even, like, did, like, because, like, this year, like, even, like, Kobe Bryant and, like, other rappers that have died and stuff, like, so many people have passed. So he just, like, included even them and, like, just, like, put down, like, their top hit or, like, a key moment that they had in their career. Um, so it was cool. That's kind of fun. Yeah. We did not watch Coco, which everyone told me to watch Coco. Um, but I plan to this week just because I want to see it personally. It looks really cool. It honestly is... Because I feel like you think, ah, Disney cartoon, is a Disney, well, whatever, cartoon, movie. The storyline yeah. is definitely not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> really? Yes. I mean, it's so cute, but definitely you'll be crying. 
Really? Oh my god. <laughs> and then, it's not that long of a movie either, but I, I did like the storyline a lot, and I think you'll like it. It's not, like, basic. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna watch it tonight. It's on Amazon Prime, so I'm just gonna get it through there. Do it. Yeah. Definitely, if you're feeling like I'm lazy today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's also only like an hour and a half, which for us is like short. <laughs> I mean, it's long, yeah. but you know. Okay. Also, you know, we haven't seen a movie. I don't know. I feel like now we're so used to binge watching things that an hour and a half is like, it's not even like two, two episodes or something. <laughs> so, um, but yay. Well, honestly, I'm really bummed that I didn't get to go see, get to go do the Day of the, of the Dead thing with you, because ever since I saw it on Criminal Minds, I thought it was a cool thing. The burning I of... think what I like about it is I like skulls, and then I love colors and flowers, and, like, that's kind of the theme of it, and yeah. then we even looked up, like, like videos of, like, people in Mexico that celebrate it, and they obviously, like, do more, like, dancing and music and stuff like that, too. So at one point, I put on the salsa song. <laughs> I was like, all right, Dakota. <laughs> I don't know if that's Mexican, but okay. <laughs> it's not. I literally, like, typed in YouTube. I was like, Mexican salsa, and, like, nothing came up. But whatever. But, you know, we love that music, so it was just an excuse. Um, but I don't know. I think it's really, really neat. And, like, I guess for me, I, didn't, I never really liked Halloween too much because I don't want to, like, dress up as someone else. Like, I just, I don't know, I think it's weird. Just me. Um, so I think with the Day of the Dead, it has, like, a more intentional, like, meaning to it. Yes. So that's well, that's I why it. I like Coco, because it wasn't so, like, lame Halloween. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> um, yeah. But, yeah, Halloween was great, but honestly, I'm kind of, the best part about Halloween there was at the end where I got to put everything away. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this place is empty again. <laughs> it was I getting bet. crazy. Chris was like, I'm just gonna go sit in the bedroom. <laughs> it's more <laughs> relaxing in there. <laughs> I'm like, there's stuff everywhere. Plus I had like all the craft stuff for like gobble gobble and like, we had a, we had a rule where we wouldn't like fill up all the, all our side projects in the living space, which is this space right here. Yeah. And we totally failed that rule. <laughs> but we're back at it again. <laughs> Just it's like a real place. Well, yeah, because I mean, we're already like I have my craft room. He has a music room. I have the garage. Yet this was like the only other space, you know. And we filled yeah. it up too. So. I know, and then it's like everything bleeds into everything else. Exactly. And yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. See, what I like to think about here is why I click on the chat and then now I can't click out of their name. Like, it's very weird. So. I, my internet's like not working enough to pull up the chat. Oh. I see that we're live, but I can't like find anything. <laughs> oh, it's not playing. It just keeps having a loading symbol, but I think it's just because I'm using my hotspot. Gotcha. But basically, after next week, I'll have internet, like stable internet, so. Yeah, so I call these the trial episodes, um, because after next week, well, next week will be fun. Next week, Sasha, Jade will be down here in Nashville with me, so we're going to be doing a joint stream. Um, she'll be helping me with all of my kits for Christmas. Um, as you all know, photo shoots are not... Photo shoots for product. Product photography is not my favorite thing to do, especially if I have to be <laughs> in the photo. Um, and it takes me a really long time, so Sasha's going to help out with that. Um, but we'll be streaming together. And I'm really excited. Honestly, we're also going to take that opportunity to do some branding things together so um we'll see what we get out of that but either some kind of um even just a, either product reel or interviews um for both of us so which is definitely helpful when you have two people Yay. 
Yeah. Um, all right, so let's get into one of our topics here. We are thinking about talking about time management um, because we talked about that a little bit last week. Um, and with time management, we all, some people are great at it, definitely. You know, I used to think nobody could be great at it. <laughs> and I met someone who no, actually- No, people could, can be amazing at it. <laughs> yeah. You're great. Okay, so then there's, there's, there are many different parts of time management, right? And you're definitely great at multitasking, which is one of the things. Uh, one of the ways you can manage right. time. Um, and so I am actually, it's so funny for me when I feel like I look at a at the big picture, I feel like I'm really bad at it. No, sorry. The big picture, I feel like I'm okay at it. But when you really zoom in, I'm like really bad at it because I'm always like, I didn't finish something and I have to move it over to the next day and I have to move it over to the next day. But when you zoom out, you're like, oh, wow, I did all of that because we're just crazy. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking that because some of the days that I forget to do something or don't make time for it and I'll move it to the next day, I'm like, should I have just powered through and just not gone to sleep until I finished it? Or was it good that I, like, put it off? Or maybe I'm just putting too much into one day and I'm not, like, thinking realistically of, right. like, how much time it actually takes to do you know, one of the tasks that I had in the morning. Like, I thought it would take 20 minutes and it took an hour and a half, half. Like, so it's like you were still productive and you still manage your time well, but you just didn't understand, like, how long something would take. And I think, for me, that's usually the problem, especially with computer stuff, dude. Like, I feel like you'll sit down and do something at the computer or, like, even social media and, like, an hour has passed and you're just like, what happened? Like, how? Yeah. And I definitely think, I mean, I... That happens to me all the time, and I feel like it's also because we're constantly learning something new, I think. I've noticed that recently yeah. with, with um, since I've taken the kids and pieces in a different direction, and then Chris also started his new project, and it's like every week we're learning like two or three new programs or way to use something, and obviously you don't have your system down like you don't have your system down yet so it's gonna i mean like even doing the twitch stuff i mean twitch has been around for a while but it's not necessarily you know the easiest thing to just yeah. start um especially if you're trying to do like multi person or multiple screens or whatever right um so a, there's such a big learning curve but the problem is with us let's say we learned it now we want to like make it better. That's like always our problem. Yeah. <laughs> and then in wanting to make it better, we mess up the first thing sometimes. So then that's why it also takes really long. So yeah, that's we, true. we were, again, was it on your video that you showed me? I can, I've been watching so many videos that I can't even remember where it was also that if you're doing when you're starting something, if you're doing something at like, if you're trying to get an A level, you're doing too much. Like, if it's yeah. a C, it's good enough for now. Yeah. So, I. But I think what I've found with myself is I'll learn something to the C level, but then I won't go back and up it to an A. I'll just be okay with the C and I'll just like do enough to match that C each time instead of like putting in a little extra time maybe a month or two later or a year later to just like master it you know what I mean so that see Sasha and I have different strengths Sasha can multitask I cannot multitask but Kat Leia is good at coming back to things <laughs> yes so and like you I feel like you really understand something like I value maintenance a lot like Coming yes, back yeah. and and I just tinker. I feel like I just kind of tinker and like whatever. But you but at like the same time, really... who's an in, who's an Instacart shopper? <laughs> Sasha, <laughs> because she just is impulsive and she's like, oh, yeah. this is another way to make money. Get on it. Meanwhile, Catley is like, yeah. okay, I need to apply to the whole thing. I need to make sure my profile's updated, so I'll do it later. 
And guess who got waitlisted? <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a good point. People do point that out a lot. Is that I mean, it could be a good and a bad thing, but my impulsivity ends up working in terms of like productivity because I just act on it. I don't like overthink it or prolong it or think it has to be perfect. I'm just like, let me just dive in and go for it and learn as I go and just, it is what it is. <laughs> right. But I do think it's nice to be thorough and take time with something and fully understand it and like fully grasp everything because then it's like what they talk about where you're like good at many things or decent at many things, but you're not like amazing at one thing. And yes. I feel like I've always kind of like struggled with that. Well, that's why it's so, I agree. And I feel like that's why we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> because we just like to be a jack of all trades but there is obviously insane value on you know being a master at, at one thing or two things or whatever which is something that I is hard for me to be like because right now I'm focusing on party kits but every time I look at my shop I'm like oh I could sell cards I could sell banners I could sell anything you know but yeah. to build your brand you have to really I mean, you can make all those things, but you really have to zone in on the thing that people are going to remember, yeah. right? So, um, what was my point to this? <laughs> oh, yeah, that we want to be a jack of all trades. Yeah. Um, so, I guess, like, just touching on, like, you just do it and all of that. And honestly, the, I wish I had more of those qualities and I'm trying to work on it and that's why I have like my to-do list where I'm just I have a new found thought on to-do list which we'll get to in a second but there's so many things we could talk about with this topic I know that's why I had to write down three because I'm I was thinking, <laughs> I just could go on for well, I was thinking too of like 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 using an agenda like writing stuff down making lists or using your phone as an agenda like the google calendar thing like there's just so many things. Right. Having separate email accounts, like even just organize. I think organization is key to time management. Like, you won't really get anywhere, I think, in time and managing your time well if you're not organized. Right. With everything you have to do, prioritizing, like how to know what to prioritize first, second, third, like. So, yeah, I mean, there's things. definitely all these things that we've heard about before. I think also, and I mean, there's all these shows now, even like the home edit, that's just organizing something that you already have. It's not even like create yeah. like, an extreme makeover type of thing. Um, but I think what people get turned off with is like, okay, oh yeah, you need to be organized. And they're like, well, I don't know. I'm not an organized person, you know? Or they'll be like, I am an organized person, but they're not really thinking about like what it is they should be organizing you know yeah um and obviously this isn't like a perfect science and maybe it is and we just don't have a solution but and if you have a solution please feel free to chat again <laughs> <laughs> um i think our problem is like the, our brain just like keeps going so yeah. that is the reason because our brains and if you're like this as an entrepreneur entrepreneurial person or an artsy person where you think of one thing and then you're like oh another one another one another one you have to i think um set no like you know on our google calendar and i'm like okay create this you have to set in three weeks or whatever come back and look at it because like it's fine for like canva for example if we're designing something and we're like oh that could be better i mean and i could but if it's that's why i was telling you about ads because when you start to apply money to it you have to come back or you're just wasting money if you're not improving it yeah and yeah. when it comes to money, I'm not wasting money. <laughs> I will invest money and spend it correctly. <laughs> yep. So I guess I'm that was my there. thing on coming well, back. Well, I think too, like related to creative ideas that you have or like, you know, being artistic or creatively inclined as an entrepreneur or just as a normal person, I have like a list in my phone like under notes where when I have an idea I'll just write it under there whether it's like a craft idea or another side project to start or something for like building my practice as an acupuncturist did you just spill it? I'm so sorry <laughs> didn't notice until I saw your face so you played it up well <laughs> yeah I definitely saw it on the screen and I was like oh they saw that they saw that I did not see it but <laughs> I'm um, listening continue <laughs> so I feel like when you list creative stuff in a list 
list, it helps. But I think you're right where, like, I'll put a bunch of stuff in a list, but I'll, I won't remember to go back to it or, like, revisit that creative idea that I had two weeks ago. So then it just sits there and it never gets built on. But then so, it's also, like, when you have creative ideas, I feel like you have to be in a creative, like, zone. Like, it, that doesn't always just happen. Like, if I were to schedule, you know, two weeks from now is, like, my day to, like, focus on my creative stuff, I might not feel creative that day. And then it's, like... You can't force it either, so it's like sometimes I, I just act on whatever my idea is at the time because I feel like it's just supposed to happen at that time because that's what I thought and okay. that's what I felt. But so for let's say let's say it's design related. And you made a design that's that you would say is a C level and you wanna revisit it, let's say in two weeks you make a thing. Like, what are you revisiting? Are you gonna look, Google ways to make it better? So that's, that's not creative, you know? Yeah. So you can always just research ways to make it better or that's think of point. ways. And then whenever yeah. you are feeling creative, it'll already be better than Yeah, because you did like, some of the groundwork. Yes, so even if it's like one article that you search for two minutes, that are like five ways to improve it, that's already five more ways than you knew before. Oh my God, that's such a good idea. All right, I'm gonna make and you would do that. You would be like waiting somewhere. <laughs> I know. Um. Yeah, because I totally, I totally agree with. But then also, it's like you know all these apps that help you now, like Preview, for example. It's like whenever you are feeling creative, then you just save it under the Preview or whatever app that you have that organizes your media stuff. Yeah. So that when you come to post it, it's already done but so yes so I am a big fan of lists but more recently I am a big fan of realistic lists which is what something you said earlier um, because we're us we try to put like 47 things in one day you know and and honestly at the end of the day I look at my list and I'm like okay I've done like four of these things four of these eight things and that's only half my list but if I didn't make a list at all, I probably would have done zero. <laughs> yeah. So, that's four more things. I, think I usually do the same thing where I'll put a list on, like, Monday. Basically, I'll look at my weekly calendar and my, like, planner. Like, let's say I have, like, a paper agenda. And then I'll put stuff for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Let's say I have appointments or a test coming up or whatever it is. Like, the stuff that's already set. And then I'll put a list of just, like, tasks that I need to complete by that day. But I noticed with that method, I wasn't conscious of how long it takes to do a task. So I would put like 10 things on Monday, you know, on like five things the next day, whatever, and then I would just move it over and move it over and move it over if I didn't finish it. Which still works because since you're looking at the full week, you can see what you didn't do on Monday. Right. And I like wouldn't cross off Monday, like I wouldn't cross out the day. Until, until I either like revisited everything listed and either moved it or crossed it off. Or if I was just like, you know, if I did complete everything, I would mark it off. But I've recently switched to Google Calendar because I don't always have, like, my agenda on me or my planner on me. And I got to the point where sometimes I forget stuff or, like, I put the appointment time in my phone, but I didn't write it in my agenda. And if I was only using my agenda that week, I just would overlook having an appointment because, like, my brain was, like, here. Right. So... I was like, let me just use one thing going forward. So I switched to Google Calendar, and the thing I like about that is now when I have, like, let's say 10 things I want to do on Monday, I have to think of a time frame for that thing and put it there. And so then it, I, it makes it more realistic. Like, okay, if, I'm, if my, my day's already full yeah. and I've already like, got four things here because time-wise it takes that much time, then I'll have to move the other stuff to other days. So I feel like it helps with, like, realistically assessing how long it takes to complete a task. And then also, um, you can color code everything. So yes. that was the other thing. Like in the planner, I'm just writing everything I need, like whether it's for school, a side project, for botanobites, my health appointments, whatever. Right. Um, it was all the same. And I feel like now with the colors, I don't know, and I love colors, so maybe that's a separate thing. But um, I put like my like workout and like fitness stuff in purple because mm -hmm. it's like for me. And then I put like personal goals, like eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has to remind herself to eat. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and green. And then 
for like Upwork clients, that's a different color. For Instacart, it's a different color. Like for school, it's blue. Like, and it helps me just see the whole week and the whole month in colors and just know like what I have to do that week. And then it helps to prioritize because you can see like, well, Monday and Tuesday, I already, you know, did Instacart, so maybe I don't have to do it these days, so right. I can focus on other stuff, or, like, kind of assess it, um, so, I, but I, like, I love writing stuff down, like, I love just writing stuff down and checking it off and processing it, like, I just love There's that There's so feeling. much satisfaction. Yes, and this doesn't do the same thing, so that kind of is, like, eh, but I think it does help with managing time better. And then there's also an option on Google Calendar where you can add reminders and tasks mm -hmm. just for that whole day. So they're not time slotted, they're just like they're just... at the top of your day. So then you can mark them as complete and it does cross it out for you. So <laughs> I've That's... learned to use that, it's okay. Um, but then yeah, if I don't finish that task that day, I just move it to another day. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing as like what I was doing with the agenda, but it's always with me, it's on my phone. Um, and it just seems a little more organized. I've, I think I've learned to like it. Having it on your like for you, having it on your phone is good because you're you're moving around so much. That's like the pace of your yeah. life right now. Because I was like, I love writing it down, crossing it off, same thing. But I was having like I had my agenda, and then I had all the sticky notes, you know, because like today's to do list. And then I had Google Calendar, and I was like, this is just too much. So I just put everything on the Google Calendar because I was also always on my computer because I'm like yeah. uploading a listing or whatever and that's where I'm always going to be because I was have I would have it on a paper and let's say I was upstairs working in the craft room with the papers downstairs you know and I could technically move on to the next thing while I'm doing this one thing not multitasking I was almost done with the previous thing <laughs> like it's, it's like crafting so it, I can't touch it so I can move on, but the paper's downstairs. Oh, I'm too lazy to go downstairs. So yeah. <laughs> if I just have it on my computer. Um, yeah, but the satisfaction of checking it off. So what I started to do was, oh, I have a, I made a to-do list within the day. <laughs> so it's the same thing as reminders. Um, and I would make it bold <laughs> when I finished it. But with the time stuff, I've also noticed, I mean, and this takes you knowing yourself, whenever I start any task with the word CRAFT, <laughs> I automatically make it all caps because it's going to take more time than I, than I think it is, you know, uh, as opposed to so post or send orders out, those are all lowercase because it's like That's quick. a good point. Yeah. So that when I see it, I'm like, so like capitals mean more time. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so when I see that, another so another thing that I go. Well, just that if I if I start scheduling things for let's say a, a day down later in the week, and I see something that's already all caps, it makes me think twice about like, oh, should I add something to that day? Because that's already gonna take right, a long time. Right, because you know it's gonna take up forever. Yeah. Sorry, that's it. Um, another thing that I just started doing naturally, but like it's been like two or three weeks now. Um, is every Sunday I sit down and I look at my week and like plan my week and like put all my time slots in or like budget and like <laughs> yeah and now like I'm mostly making like weekly earnings or whatever like through Instacart and like the Upwork stuff um, so I'm able to just I, and I, I like that like when I worked at Orion Earth, I was getting I, I got paid weekly and I just feel like you're more conscious of how much you're making whereas when it's bi-weekly I don't know it just doesn't feel as Connected. I don't know. Well, you're in control like, right now of what you're making. Whereas if it's just a lump yes. sum. True, true, true. Yeah. And it's like consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for example, if like I know bills are coming up in like two weeks and I like set a budget for how much I need to make this week and next week, that's realistic. You know what I mean? So for example, like I'm going to your place this weekend. So that's like time that I won't do Instacart, for example. So then I know I have to prioritize that like in the earlier part of the week. Or if I have appointments, you know, later on in the week, then you have to like, so I think it helps to just revisit each week like that. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, it also like puts it onto the universe. Like I need this amount by this date. So that's like my goal for this week. Yeah. And, um, and that way, if you meet your goal before the end of the week, you're like, okay, I can chill. Right. Or like, if you didn't, then you're just like, okay, I got to keep going. So it also helps you like 
stay on top of yourself because you have to like run your own self essentially like when you're an entrepreneur or someone that just does freelance stuff or whatever it is right so that's another thing i wanted to touch on for time management um this is part of my top three you can share a top three oh, yeah um wait what was the top what was the first one for me the the first one was prioritize okay. or just one of the three is prioritize um whether it's google calendar and then the all caps thing because it's like that's gonna take a long time that's the majority of my day um i'm gonna write that down all caps and i'll do i do colors but i do it a little differently um i kind of go by brightness <laughs> so like post and like send orders it's gray be, like a lighter color because it's kind of like i gotta do it um but it doesn't take up a lot of time in my day but if there's like a hard deadline well sending orders is a hard deadline but but if there's something like a hard deadline like the kit needs to be released today kind of thing um i'll do it like a bright orange so i can't ignore it that day so it's like right. oh yeah this needs to be done today so i do a little different differently but prioritizing well, I kind of, like the upwork stuff and into part stuff is all like a bright orange because it's like work and then the um like anytime i have a meeting set like even this or an appointment with like a doctor or whatever those are in red because it's like you gotta go yes like <laughs> and then for school it's blue because it's like it's there it's always gonna be there i love how we say it's there like send orders go to school but it's like we have to do those anyway <laughs> yeah um yeah like the things we can't miss and i mean and i've also accepted like, I used to be, like, prioritized, like, obviously, like, Twitch is important to me, like, ever since we started this, you know? And, I mean, we talk all the time anyway about our business stuff, but this is now a thing. And in the beginning, I, w I wanted to, I have on my Sunday list, like, always plan week and plan Twitch. Like, that's, like, a category. But the last few weeks have been, like, kind of crazy, right? But that's why I told you, I was, like, after, in a couple of weeks, like, all the other stuff that we're gonna be doing that takes priority will already be done so this will move yeah. up in the priority list yeah. right yeah so prioritize um and then i'm just gonna say these two but i want to go into the second one really quick is is we kind of talked about it but it's like valuing time meaning i think you told me this so on the short end is if it takes five minutes, I think you told me this, if it doesn't take more than five minutes to do, just do it now. Don't write that you're yeah, gonna do it later. Sounds like something I've said. Yeah, I feel like you said something like that. And then if it's more than five minutes, then whatever. Or five or 10 minutes, whatever. Because the time that you're taking to think about it and write it down, you could have just done it. <laughs> then, yeah. but then time. That, that, yes. You did say that because I feel like before. Well, there was a patient in my old job in, uh, Ryan Herbs, and I remember he told me that he was like and he kind of has like a similar personality type to us but he was just like for me if I think of writing it down or I just happen to think of it I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because I don't want to like risk forgetting it or risk not doing it if, I, if, if it's already here it already had like and I, when he said that it just stuck with me and I was like you're still right <laughs> well yeah and then some things do take longer than you think they do but then sometimes things are way faster than you think and you're overthinking them like yeah so then that was part of, that's in within category two, it's like don't overthink. So if it takes less than five minutes, just do it. Yes. And if it takes a long time, also set a time cap. Like you need to yeah. move on, you know? Which yeah. sometimes I feel like when you set your mind, like I need to move on, all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, let me just finish this up where it is. And all of a sudden you just yeah. finish it. And then it's great. <laughs> and then it's great. And then again, if you finish it and you're like, oh, this is a C, you did good enough. <laughs> <laughs> schedule to revisit it in a week or two that's it and then yeah honestly i do that though i'm like okay this is good enough but i need to come back then i google calendar move on because then you'll like never move on yeah like a follow-up and then maybe you come back in a week and you're like that's actually a beat and then you keep going <laughs> yeah it's funny it's like yesterday because okay my landlord left so we have to take care of her animals and there's like two horses three goats and a dog but um, yesterday, 
thinking about doing it, I was like, oh, this is gonna suck, it's cold out, I gotta do this, do that, I don't know what's gonna happen, like, you start thinking of all the shit, and I literally just stopped, and I was like, robot mode. Just <laughs> do it. was a robot, it would just say, feed animals, and you go feed animals. <laughs> you don't think about it. Can we just and talk I about how like, she has to feed the animals right now? <laughs> Dakota tried doing it yesterday and it was it was not okay. It was it was a mess. It was bad. Anyway, um, it's like a giant horse. It, it, it's it's just a lot. Anyway, so um, I had to literally go into like robot mode when it comes to stuff like that. But I feel like I use that mentality when it comes to like responding to text messages or answering a phone call or like you know having that client phone call and let's say they're ranting or they're going off on tangents like you got to bring them back to like the main topic and just think like input output like what was the point of this conversation is that what is being outputted if it's not you got to bring it back to, right. to that and that helps with managing your time that way you're not wasting time like I mean obviously build a good relationship with these people that's key but um I think part of like managing projects and kind of managing business is like understanding when you need to come back to the main topic and like go through it, which we're kind of learning through doing Twitch as well. Um, and then, yeah, so I feel like whenever it comes to just completing a task, it's good to just not literally think you're a robot, but kind of just put yourself aside, like put your thoughts about it aside, put your feelings about it aside, and just like pull, like power through it. Obviously, if like it's just not your day and you're not in the mood. I'm totally a fan of honoring that and like not forcing anything to happen. I do think things happen when they're supposed to happen. Like if it's not today, it'll happen next week. And that's when it was supposed to happen. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's a deadline. <laughs> like, that's then, fun. oops. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. My computer's fine. The other computer. <laughs> oh, please hold. I did my shorts. Don't judge me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so, sorry. Just to cover the last topic really quick. Um, so yeah, the five minute rule and, um, or a time cap, so just valuing time. So prioritize value time, and the last one is something that I'm starting to get into, but I've always valued, is delegating. Um, so, if possible. And by delegating, it's not like just being like, you do this, <laughs> but right. finding people to help you get through some of this stuff. And this is more obviously for entrepreneurship, not like, hey, brother, do the dishes for me. But <laughs> um, I mean, if that works, go for it. But I, I feel like, for example, I was struggling with the photo shoot and sometimes it's just worth it to work with somebody Okay, Sasha. <laughs> um, because it'll just help you get things done faster. I could be spending, you know, eight days doing a photo shoot. Like, not one. Three photo shoots. <laughs> um, yeah. Or I could have Sasha help me and finish it in two days. So, right. it's just, um, it's sometimes hard because when you're doing things by yourself, one, you might like how things come out. And you're like, it's better when I do it. And I know we say that a lot of, of times. But now that I'm thinking sea yeah. level is good enough for now, um, I've been more open to like working with other people. And then sometimes they're at least they gave me a B. Whereas if I made it, I would have made a C. <laughs> you know? True. Yeah. And then I think a big part of that, which I've noticed with Chris starting his um, his project, is. You have to be, so the only thing about delegating is you have to be ready to delegate. Meaning, for example, if I'm trying to figure out Twitch, I shouldn't be delegating it to you who doesn't know it yet. You know what I mean? Right. So, because mm -hmm. then if you have questions, then I don't have the answer. Like, like Chris is ready to delegate. The, that duty to yes. someone you know what right. I mean because he's masked yeah. yeah so because then it's gonna take me more time when you have a question now I have to figure it out that means I wasn't ready to give it to you so like photo shoots I've done five of them well five kit ones mm -hmm. I've done a billion photo shoots in my life um now yeah. I'm ready to be like Sasha I know what I need from you so um 
that's a good point yeah. where it's like you should relatively understand what you're about to delegate that way you can delegate effectively because right. i feel like you could delegate or people can and this happens a lot where they delegate a task or delegate a project but they don't understand it themselves right and even if that other person understands it more than them you still need that other person that delegated it in the first place to be like the foundation of what you're doing successfully or what the other person is supposed to do that you're delegating it to so i feel like it helps to just know at least an average amount of everything that you're delegating yes. <laughs> that way if they do have questions or if like you guys have different understand like i mean a photo shoot i could i could go there and think a totally different concept right for the photo shoot but if it's her business and her vision, then it matters more that she delegates what she wants for me than for me to just be like, well, this is what I think. So I think it, it helps a lot to like understand what you're delegating first. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, obviously, we've learned that over the years, too, after poor delegating, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, and you and your birthday party planning and, like, all that stuff, you have experience with delegating a lot. I just am a big fan of, like, you cannot do it alone. And I know with my business, I try to do it alone. And that's actually, like, the next step in my media plan is um, collabs and affiliates. Sorry, forgot the word. I was like, I'm delegating. <laughs> um, and it's hard for me because it's something I'm not familiar with yet. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, I'm not going to get the word out on my own you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I definitely think when it's right, like I worked with Grace on the party playlist for the website and, um, I had never worked with Grace in that way. I mean, I, I know her my whole life, but, um, you know, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I was going to ask her a month before that I actually asked her and I'm glad I didn't because I didn't know what I was asking yet. Yeah. So then finally I was like, okay, this is what I kind of want. And literally in one shot, she did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was like perfect. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, this worked. <laughs> and like she even went like a step, you know, beyond that and made artwork for the playlist. So they each say my kit name on it um, or the kit names on it. And I feel like you kind of ran into that when you had that girl that was helping you with the events and the media stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, I feel like too, it's like, it's, it's almost ties into like networking, like you're, you're extending your network or like the amount of people that know about you or know about your product or know about your service, just the more people that you involve in your project. So it's, and I think that's like part of what's fun about being a creative is like pairing up with other creatives and like, you know, working on projects together. I don't know. Okay. But then as the leader on my on my google calendar i had luckily grace was good um but i had to put okay the day i texted grace to be like i need this playlist by friday for example on the friday day on the google calendar i was like get playlist from grace like i had to put that because <laughs> otherwise i'm gonna tell her i need it yes. and then i just keep going on with my life right right and she could be great and turn it in by then and then i'll be prompted to post it or whatever but she could not. <laughs> yeah. And who cares other than me? Like, key thing, like another reason I've been so big on making lists and scheduling stuff and all that stuff is it takes it out of your mind and puts it somewhere else. So like, I think what's also hard is like, as an entrepreneur is learning to shut your brain off or learning when to like put it to the side and just be present or be like with your significant other or with your family or with your friends and like, not feel like oh wait did i remember this what about this email what about this phone call like there's so many things you could always think about right but that. Like, you, you still don't want to be completely consumed by your business at all times because in a sense it is like your baby so naturally you're always going to think about it and like want to tweak it and do all this stuff um but i i think it is like key to be able to separate it and know how to like compartmentalize it in a sense yeah. so that you can still like have good relationships with the people you care about and love. Well, yeah, um, planning me time is, <laughs> we too. say it's important, like, no, we value it a lot, both of us, but it's so easy to just be like, like, sometimes you'll be like, oh, I didn't exercise today, and you feel terrible about it, and it's yeah, like, like, as guilty. if you didn't send an order, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and I agree, like, the, like I've been, I had been trying to hang out with Chris for, like, a few days, and it was just so crazy. But that's where I also think time capping, so that you... Okay, because it's not like you stop working on a logo, for example, and you're ready to hang out, you know? It's like you gotta, like, right. eat or take yeah. a shower or something. And just... Yeah. So then, but also, delegating can work with this, too, which I've noticed is saying, hey, I'm gonna be free this time, like, I'm making time for us, plan something, so that right. you now don't also have to plan something <laughs> when you're finally yes. free. <laughs> yeah, that's key. That is so key. Every time Dakota's like, where do you want to eat? I'm like, I don't even care, just as long as you pick it. <laughs> as long as I don't have to think about it, I'm fine. Because if I have to think about it, I'll look it up, I'll look at the menu, I'll see how much everything costs, and I'll like, <laughs> yeah. we'll see how far it is. And then freaking <laughs> decision I fatigue. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to go eat a granola bar. <laughs> well, you have a good point, too, because there are times where I'll I'll finish a task, and right when I'm done doing that task, I'll just start hanging out with Dakota, but my mind hasn't had a chance to fully stop. So I'll end up just talking about that task. Yes. Or talking about that client or talking about whatever it is that I just, just tried to let go of. And, yes, it's a form of venting or form of, like, you know, connecting because you're sharing, like, what you're doing with the other person. But at the same time, like, I'd rather unwind, like you said, and, like, just kind of have my me time before doing that. That way, when we do talk with each other, it's maybe, like, sharing information or sharing something you learned or a new song or, like, something a little more, I don't know. Not stressful? Connected <laughs> and not stressful. Yeah, it's not stressful. That's key. Um, so that's a good point. Well, yeah, I know, like, for example, the impression reel was so, like, random, but I was honestly happy that I did something with a camera that wasn't a live stream um, or photo shoot related, that it was actually just for me. Like, for your business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, whatever, I'm just, like, hanging out here by myself, but it's, like, and it's like, it wasn't due, or I didn't need to get all the likes in the world. Yeah. All right. 45 likes. I thought that too. Even like posting about the day of the dead thing on Instagram, I was like, that's not related to acupuncture or health or wellness. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like, it was something great. I did for myself, which I never do. <laughs> so yeah. I just let it be there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like some people are just great at like, man, their lives just look amazing. And yeah. maybe, I mean, obviously. I don't want to say obviously because some people do have amazing lives, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I mean it could be fake. But honestly, though, I mean I don't go out very much, and maybe I do do like some fun things like hip hop class. I don't go out very much since COVID. Sorry, let's clarify. <laughs> yeah, um, you used to go out like every night. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I go to hip hop. And honestly, to me, that is a cool image. But I don't know. I felt, I feel, I'm not like a poster, you know, like a person who posts a lot. I'm not a poster. <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, so, and it's also like, you know, like with a, every post, it's like there's so much confidence, you know, like with the date of the dead thing, it's like complete. You're like, I did this, you know, and I finished my Mormon costume. But with, like, hip-hop, I'm, like, still trying to figure out what the heck I'm even doing. So I'm not going to be like, look at me, yeah. Adidas. <laughs> but I think that's good because I feel like other people post too often about, like, things that they're, like, just starting or, like, whatever about. And it just kind of, like, I don't know. I think it's a different source. Like, I think they're posting just for, like, a different reason. They're not really <laughs> posting to, like, share something. What? Sorry. Finish your sentence because not Mrs. Yeah. Ruiz is back and I want, I need to know if this is Sabrina. <laughs> I know, I'm, I, that's what I thought. I know, but I, I, <laughs> we didn't get the answer because we didn't announce is it, it that we think it's Sabrina. Sense? Listen. What did she say or he say? Okay. Well, first, sorry, I interrupted what you were saying, but we're going to go first to, to not Mrs. Ruiz here. I think based on what you guys post, I can't believe you can't see the chat. 
I think based on what you guys post, as little as it may be, it gives off the impression that you have cool lives. What do you think about that, Bruno? Thanks, but I want to know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, please share your theory because I think we ended the stream the last time you shared your theory. Well, Miss Ferides was a freaking teacher we had in high school. So I thought the name related to that. And it was this AP Lang class that I actually loved because she was a freak about all of the things we did, mostly just writing and writing and writing and writing. But um, I don't know. And then Sabrina was in that class, wasn't she? Yes. I just well, don't know. She I definitely just thought, and, and Sabrina's <laughs> was in one of the classes. Like, she's, she's witty and like into language, and I don't know. I just thought like having that kind of username was like a, a, a like a thing to that. But I could just be ranting about this, and it's totally irrelevant. <laughs> what if it's Mrs. Ruiz? And for um, tuning in again. But you know, I'm honestly gonna say, okay, and then more flip, uh, I'm gonna say, is that Felipe? I'm not sure. Um, you know, Felipe, uh, Taryn's boyfriend. Yeah, is that who it is? Uh, more flip is another person that commented. Um, I think uh, uh, Instagram versus reality is very real. Okay, so to me, for me, on both of those comments Can they is, expand on that? Yeah, okay, go. Can they oh, can they expand? What do you mean by that, more flip? Oh, is it Moray? Moray? Because his last name? More? Maybe it is. But tell us more. Okay, because I think... Okay. Yes, half of me is like, this is so fake. Right? And the other half is like, is it... I don't know. I look at my Instagram, and I was like, for most of my life, I was pretty happy. <laughs> or I am pretty happy. <laughs> Whatever. I have bad days, but I'm okay. And I have a lot of parties. I celebrate all the time. I'm always doing stupid things that I end up posting. I mean, that's pretty accurate. I feel like if you look at my thing, it's like, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> And like, okay, let's say I post a picture even with a significant other, an ex-significant other. It's like, at the time, I was with them, and I had a great time. Yeah, and yeah, maybe we broke up, but like, I, I don't know. I'm like that too. I think for me, I post, I've noticed I post more when I feel better in like my life. Like if I just feel like I'm at a good point, or I feel like positive, or... I don't know. When I feel like my best self, I end up sharing more. That's just all I've noticed. And like when I maybe just need more me time or more time to like figure out where I'm at at that moment, I just, I want all of my experiences to be for me. I don't want them to be for my social media or for other people to see. And I feel like that's the main difference for me, at least when it comes to like whether I share on my story or not, or whether I share a post or not, is just like, I want it to always be for me. So if I'm sharing a post that means something because it's like a pretty flower, that's just because I like the flower and like thought it would look cool, I guess. Um, but then there's other times where like I'll go through a whole day and do 20 things and I never shared any of it on my story, but I had a great time and I just wanted to be present. I didn't want to have to think, let me take my phone out. Let me make sure I capture this. Let me make sure I write a cool caption or put this or put that or add this gift. So, like right. there's so much thought that goes with any post really. But don't so you just get I used to it? Okay, let's say now I am. Right. Okay, but yeah. It's like how you are at home and how you are at work might be different, but it's not entirely different. You're not a freaking dead robot at work and you come at home and you're like, well, buddy. Like you're still pretty much the same person, I would hope, if I met you at work and you weren't a 180 degrees different person when you get home. <laughs> and like, okay, yeah, maybe you're not as wild at work, but you're used to your work pers persona and you're there. It's not like you're lying to everybody. You know, you're used to how you yeah. talk to people. You're used to how you act around other coworkers. I mean, it's not the same. It's just another per persona for social media, but it's not exactly the fakest thing. I mean, yeah, some people 
I mean, I don't know what lives they're living, but... But maybe they are living those lives, you know? But also, our entire lives, are we just trying to live the best life? Like, why are we trying so hard at work and at school and whatever to live a great life? So, I'm sorry if I highlight the fun parts of my life just so I can look back and be like, I love my life. (laughs) No, and I I think, like, I mean, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, people always post the highlights or, like, the better parts of their day or the better parts of their lives. But it's like, yeah, because your sad moments and, like, your deeper, like, shitty moments, you're probably going to reach out to your close friends. You're not going to go on a public platform and put that out there unless that's what you're used to and that's like where your community lies and that's different but I feel like it makes sense to like still have things that are yours like not everything you do and share has to be for everyone like like you you should still keep some stuff and that's why I feel like I don't know I think that way about relationship stuff like I think relationships should be sacred like they should be for you and that person like I, I don't know if you should like share it all the time on social media what are. I'm getting word comments again, so I'm going to be reading them. Sweet. Or in some way that I can never figure out. <laughs> you should make it easier. Like, For some reason, I can't get the stream to play. Jeez, how do I get rid of this dude? Got him. <laughs> Sorry, what are these fools? <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, Felipe, you know how he says, mod me, cat, like make him a moderator so you can remove those janky messages. But <laughs> I'm still going to use the Twitch, relax here, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it took us 25 minutes to get online today because our freaking stream key was messed up. <laughs> um, time him out! Why do you even do that? <laughs> Next time, Felipe, you're going to be a moderator. <laughs> um, okay, but I'm also more flip. I'm still waiting on what you mean by Instagram versus... Re- I lost Sasha. I'm the only one here. Okay. <laughs> my Instagram versus, re- versus reality is very real. I need to get my partner. Okay. Man, we're getting all the creeps today, aren't we? Really? See, but I thought... I agree with you. So... Oh, I don't know if Sasha's listening, but he sa- uh, he says, I think, or she, we don't know who it is. Um, I think Sasha put it in a good way. Uh, you're really only going to put the happy parts on Instagram, not the challenging parts or social media. Uh, so I think perception of life through social media is all super happy. But to me, it makes sense. Like, I don't think people should be shamed for that, like... Right, so we're not disagreeing with that, more flip. We're simply saying, after all this time, why is that so bad? <laughs> yeah, oh, he's not I disagreeing either. To, like, or she. <laughs> I try to ask myself, like, if I'm doing something, like, would I be okay with doing this in front of people? Because essentially that's what you're doing. Like, you're putting it out there for other people to see. But if it was in real person, like, in real life, would you be okay with doing that in front of people? And like, if I'm crying, no, I wouldn't fucking cry in front of people. <laughs> like, right, like in real life, no one, okay, at work, again, I'm like, if I'm at work, no one, or very minimal people, or selective situations, would people know why I'm crying at work? <laughs> like, and maybe, for example, let's say, hopefully never, or, or whatever, my grandma had the stroke. Well, now everyone's going to know. But <laughs> my grandma had a stroke a few years ago, and, like, I didn't talk about it for a while, but then finally we were doing a fundraiser, and I was like, okay, I'm going to put it on social media because how else are you going to get the money? <laughs> but, like, I feel like it's, like, 
strategic, just like strategic at work. Like I wasn't going around being like, my grandma had a stroke, you know? I don't know. So, okay. But, wait. More flip, I think the problem with it is people expect for everyone to have at li that life. That is true. Yeah. That but is I true. Like with, the, like with the acceptance of mental health awareness and mental health issues now, people are being more open about, like, if you feel anxious or depressed, like, sharing that on social media just so people know, like, it's a normal thing. But, um, I don't know. I think sometimes when you're depressed or anxious, like, you need some yin time. Like, you need a hot bath. You need to, like, watch your favorite movie and, like, be by yourself. Like, I, I don't think always reaching out and, like, expending energy in that direction like feeds or nourishes away that like anxiety or depression in like a deep way like I, I just it could help it could obviously help to just know people in your community and that people are looking out for you and like sending their best wishes but at the end of the day they're just on the other side of the screen they're not with you right. they're not in person they're not you know calling you on the phone like so I just I feel like that those times should be more for actually reaching out for like meaningful experiences or conversations or whatever well, that's part of why I wanted to do this because I I don't know I feel like our our two favorite people um, that watch us might agree with this and let us know if you don't or what you think. But I want we wanted to do the Twitch thing because we always talk all the time anyway about our business stuff. But then it's also like everything is so curated now. Like when you go to a webinar, and it's like first steps to success. <laughs> And you're like, okay, and then you watch it on like 1.75 speed, and you're like, okay, what do I need to learn from this? <laughs> and it's just like some yeah. old lady talking about like, nah, 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 nah. and you don't actually get to the bit that you need probably ever because it's somehow ingrained in there in a way that you're supposed to decrypt. <laughs> but you know, and then you already paid 17.95 for it. But so I wanted it to be like, like this is our. I mean, this is legit. <laughs> our Monday mornings and we want to hear yeah. about like your Monday mornings and like it's not yeah like I feel like it's not all fun and games but it's also sometimes not that horrible I don't know I've been watching The Good Place lately too <laughs> maybe that's <laughs> what's affecting me um damn what are all of these freaking things Sorry. I think it helps too to build community. So I feel great. Like now everything's so distant. Dude, you need to be on the chat next time because it's creep the Lord. I don't want to give them my attention, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, so. Not like the people that are actually helping us <laughs> talk, but I mean the other people. What? I just. Are, our friends have our backs. <laughs> They're like, what are they scamper back off into your hole. <laughs> scamper <laughs> off back into your hole. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, so the Not Mrs. Ruiz also says, do the wake up pick challenge. The face is as real as it gets. LOL. <laughs> Which is oh, so I, true. I, I, I this is literally our wake up. <laughs> okay, but that's where I think the people who are normal, let's say, not Mrs. Ruiz, more flip, you and me. Uh, I love how we're all like pretty weird people, but we're the normal people. <laughs> but I feel like, no, come back, Sasha. Okay. Um, I feel like, let's say we did do that wake up challenge, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about normal, but well, let's say we do do the wake up challenge. Okay, normally we don't look like we're going to the club. So when we wake up, it's not that big of a difference. I feel like those yeah. really pretty, like, not that we're not all pretty or hot or whatever. <laughs> um, those like really like on fleek people on Instagram. Yeah, when they wake up, they don't look like that. <laughs> yeah. We woke up right now, we look like this. <laughs> makeup on or anything you could still like put a certain angle to where you look better and then other angles where you look like shit yeah um but honestly I, I would never want to take a if somebody took a picture of me and I looked like horrible 
Like, I usually don't care if I'm like, whatever. All of my pictures look like that even if I did try to take them on purpose. <laughs> but if I like really look like diseased or something, I would be like, dude, don't post that. <laughs> well, and I think like, if I get up and go to work or go out in public, if I'm going to shower, I'm going to get ready before anyone sees me because that's, that's what makes me feel best. The only person that sees like my wake up face is like my significant other, the person I live with or yeah. whatever. So again, like, maybe those moments should be saved for like your important people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not everything should be shared, including your wake up face. Like, yeah. I barely want to share it with the person I live with. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because my, my face is swollen every morning. Like, and I always called it Chinese eyes because I just look extra Chinese. When it <laughs> As like, if she like, wasn't already kid. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Since I was a kid, it's always looked like that, and um, I guess it's like allergies or something. So I try to like <laughs> get rid of that before I leave. What? You need to be all these chats. What are they <laughs> Share it. Just tell me. On fleek, not Mrs. Ruiz. On fleek is so subjective. You guys are definitely fleek, yo. Sorry, my screen is cracked. Um. Thanks, and we think you are too. I feel like you know. We're not here for like, oh my gosh, please have like 500 views. But I feel like if the right people watch, it makes me happy. The people yeah, who need this. Yeah, the whole point of sharing on social media is you attract, like like attracts like. So whatever you're sharing, whatever you're putting out there, you're gonna get those types of people. And I feel like that's why it is good to share, even if it is something small like starting a hip hop class, because there might be someone else that's just starting out too, and now it relates to you. Or you, know, you yourself can like track your progress so then it's also for you because you can see how you evolve week to week or whatever i agree and felipe this is for you oh sorry for the coffee stains loveless cafe um it's okay sasha you'll understand when you come next week <laughs> i'll take you to the loveless cafe We'll have some I biscuits. love that name. That's great. It's so cute. Um, yes. So, I mean, I'm just going to go into a little bit really quick. He made the biscuits. So Felipe bought biscuits to take back to Miami when, from Loveless Cafe. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. We they were so good. Like, their biscuits. I'm not a biscuit. I'm not a bread person because it makes me really full. Not because I don't like it. But if you are a bread person, <laughs> it's quite dangerous. I invite you all, only the on fleet people, not those weird creeps, to Nashville. I don't know, who knows? And maybe, actually, I already ran into Sabrina. <laughs> At Bonnaroo. Oh, that's right. Nice. So technically, we were already <laughs> in Nashville. Her. <laughs> yes, next week we both will be together here in Nashville. Um, and we're going to be decked out in Christmas gear, so I'm really <laughs> excited. Um, oh my gosh, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish like the other, the other people could be on the Zoom call. Because I feel like, because Felipe is like, oh, I have the best story about Taryn, by the way, regarding that biscuit mix. Uh -huh, it is Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> that confirmed one person. Uh, but I wish you could be here and tell us because, I mean, you could definitely write it, but I don't know if it's really long. So I feel bad. So, but feel free if you want to share it. <laughs> um, so, really quick about hip hop, and then, um, oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, really quick about hip hop, and then I want to touch on this last topic really quick, um, which I think Sabrina, not Mrs. Ruiz, sorry, don't mean it those people <laughs> might have some thoughts on because she's in the design world but um hip-hop I started because I really needed well I needed to exercise one and I was doing it at home and I was like this is pathetic <laughs> because I need motivation I'm not I can't, I can't go to the gym and like motivate myself when it comes to that but also um I, I like learning things, right? And I focus more and I care more when I'm learning something. Whereas, like, if I'm just doing, like, a, an online workout, then I kind of just get over it. 
because it's kind of, I mean, it's pretty much the same realm of things every time. But the, the third reason I decided to do it, other than the fourth reason, which is <laughs> interacting with people, but the main reason I wanted to do it um, was for confidence because running your own hustle, side hustle, gig, whatever it is, is like half of it is confidence. 80% of it is confidence. Is, and it's going out there and being like, look at my stuff. Talk to me. I need you. I want to work with you. Whatever it is. And maybe I'm confident in my product, but I'm not confident in in just associating it with my face and putting it out there. Like that's not something I've always been good at. I mean, I've had Taryn in the past um, help me with social media because she's so good at that, you know. And she's like, man, she used to like post things, and I'm like, a hundred six likes. On my face! <laughs> what? <laughs> so, um, and I feel like now, like, lot being on um, live or reels or stories, whatever, is the only way to get yourself out there. But I was so, like, uncomfortable with that. that and in hip-hop, sorry, if you guys have never taken a hip-hop class, it is pure confidence, okay? If you are not confident, that move looks <laughs> like you're, like, noodling in, like, a weird bad thriller video. <laughs> like, you just look like you're doing this. <laughs> and so I started taking it, and the first couple of classes, I wasn't, you know, I was just doing the moves, whatever, and I was in, like, I got an outfit like I was going to yoga. Okay, so then I would see these people dressed up like they're ready for hip, like in this like kind of huge um, sw jacket hoodie. You have to. I'm, dude, I'm never wearing this again though because I almost passed out. <laughs> I was so hot. Yeah, How do you do that? Like, baggy pants versus leggings are like a game changer with hip hop. Okay. The, the movements are so explosive that like. Yes. It adds to your moves. Like if I'm doing this. Like you know how you used to like make fun of people, that's horrible, we shouldn't do that anymore, but back in the day we totally did, make fun of people and their arm jiggle. Um, the arm jiggle is great in hip hop, <laughs> because it's like a double move, like you move and then it moves too. <laughs> Dude, oh my God, life changing. So yeah, <laughs> with the pants, you're in the joggers, and you move, and then the flap goes again, so it looks like you, like, really moved. <laughs> no, so. I literally, like, I'll dance in my living room to just, like, hip-hop music and stuff, and just, like, do my own thing, whatever. And when I'm wearing leggings, I feel like I look retarded. Like, it looks so stupid. And literally, I'll do the same things, just wearing, like, joggers or sweatpants, and it looks totally different. Like, totally looks... different. And I'm just, like... So then I was, That's like... That's so interesting, because I've always seen that wear baggy pants, but... It's because it looks totally different. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I made fun of that in the beginning. I was like, yo, these people are dressed out, dressed up for beginner hip hop. <laughs> and then I went on Shein and I bought a bunch of hip hop clothes. <laughs> athleisure. I bought a bunch of athleisure. <laughs> because it really, okay, because I wasn't going to wear this again because it's super heavy and hot, but. Yeah. Um, but you definitely, anyway, so yeah, the point is, um, <laughs> the point is, um, you see not Mrs. Ruiz, confidence is, it's like, especially, first of all, you are so great at what you do, which I'm sure it's transformed over the years, but from what I know, which is graphic stuff, right, I don't know if you've gone more into video side or journalism side or tell me what you do but um I feel like it's so important to sell like and I know I was working in a hotel selling events but it's different <laughs> like when it's your own thing because you have so many reservations about it right but honestly some of those people we've seen on Upwork <laughs> I know you on Upwork yeah. girl tell me you're not on Upwork okay uh, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, I just really stand by doing something that's out of your comfort zone that requires confidence. Um, yeah. Because it's not as bad as it seems. So then when I started getting into the moves, right, 
first of all, I noticed nobody cares what I'm doing because they're all focusing on themselves, trying not to look yeah. stupid. Right, right. Um, so it made me feel better because then I could just focus on me and look at myself in the mirror and be like, okay, is this right? Is this good? Um, or I'll ask questions and I, I ask the teacher, like, how do you do more hip hop style? Like, I'm not used to this. I was in swing dancing. <laughs> like, it's, very different. it's all so different. Yeah. So, I mean, and I like learning. So, um, it, and it, it feels good to, you know, because we're always like an entrepreneurship, we're just working on a project. Okay. Go to the next project, go to the next project, do this, do this, do this. There's never a completion until maybe a month down the road where we're like, wow, that project's over. In hip hop though, you show up to class, you learn the routine, you perfect it, you leave. <laughs> Task completed. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I did one thing today. <laughs> I completed this task. I come out my I come yes. out mine tomorrow. It's like my first one. Another But I um, feel like I got a similar thing from like Zumba class. Like yeah. you also have to have confidence when you do those types of like dancing and whatever it is. Um which at first I was like uncomfortable with because I'm not that kind of person and like even growing up I never went to parties or dance or like did the whole thing people do um so I think for me it was a big deal because it like broke me out of my shell but I noticed like because it's also cardio it's also for yourself like you you, you, you feel so good <laughs> like you just leave feeling so yeah. good and then it makes you confident in other parts of your life just because you did it and like had that experience we have a comment from um more flip improv was a huge confidence boost for Taryn um, and things like public like public speaking and entertaining were so much easier it's true and if it and I feel like I did notice that with Taryn too um, if, for those of you who don't know Taryn she was more on the soft spoken side um, and then she was taking improv classes for she's uh, an angel but she, yeah no she's perfect <laughs> she's literally <laughs> top three perfect people in my life <laughs> but even with her flaws or whatever she wants to call flaws <laughs> um but she was maybe still is is she still taking it i know well yeah she's perfect <laughs> yeah. um but i don't know is she still in class no i think i think they stopped um but they stopped but i don't know if they went back okay so um but yeah it definitely I noticed the change, yeah. um, even when I had my Christmas party, and it's not so much about like, you were this and now you're like the opposite end, it's more just like, just like growth, you know, it, it doesn't, it could yeah. be like 10%, it could be 50%, but to me, honestly, if it was 100%, it would have been kind of weird, <laughs> like, it would have been like, what just happened to you? I think, like, I think all young adults should do something like that at a young age, because I do think it would help them, like, have more access to like building their career or like I don't know oh, presenting themselves as what they are right I guess and like I remember I, my uncle always recommended to do like acting classes and stuff like that and I was like no but I had to just do things at my own pace and do my own thing with my own way so dance is one of them but I remember my mentor he took improv classes too right before he was starting his like officially his own business um and it was for like the same reason. So I think it is common for entrepreneurs or just whatever people in general, I guess, um, to do stuff like that, just because it helps build confidence and like outreach and ex like communicating with people and I don't know, presentation, bunch of stuff. Yeah, and and just I think a lot of it is for both hip hop and improv is not overthinking, um, mm -hmm. especially like improv too. It's like you. You plan, you execute. <laughs> you plan, you execute. <laughs> like, there's no, yeah. oh, is this going to be a good accent? Oh, you know, should I be the cop or the fireman? Like, you know, so that, and it's also like, I think with your, depending on, for example, like, I think Taryn is hilarious. <laughs> Taryn and Felipe. But it's like, maybe... You know, may, like I'm, I'm not speaking for her, like, I don't know. But maybe, for example, if she gets in front of people, she gets shy. And then it makes it harder to to just let go. It's not really to be funnier. It's just to be herself, yeah. you know, um, yeah. who's already funny. So, or just to step into, like, 
a quick character. It doesn't have to be. That, my only thing with improv is like everyone thinks it has to be really funny, which I think is a lot of pressure. Um, but I mean, great improv could be super serious, but I know in the show, no one's gonna come watch super serious crying drama. So, um, <laughs> uh, wait, we have some comments. Oh, they did stop. Um, and you know, I will say, he says, I think the next step is dance classes when COVID is all over. Um, and I'm going now. And there, honestly, there are not that, well, at least the one I go to, there are not that many people because people are so afraid of COVID and we're so far apart. I'm definitely, there's like six foot um, stickers in all directions in that class. And we're definitely like, 12 feet apart because there's just no kids and the room is huge That's so much better. <laughs> um yeah so it to me it's not that bad because it's not it's not full of people um and what i like to do like when i do classes because oftentimes i'm like you know super shy or like judging myself or whatever so i actually like to be in the front which i know makes no sense maybe because then everyone sees you but that way, if for me, all I see is the teacher, and I'm not distracted by everyone else that I could be looking at. Right. Like, I'd rather just be the teacher. Or if there's, like, one other person in front of me that's, like, good at it, and I can kind of, like, model off of them, then that helps. But you have but to know that they're like good. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. Because I was behind this one girl that I thought was good, and I was like, oh, she's worse <laughs> than me. <laughs> I'm like, too. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> could still build confidence um yes so uh Felipe if you guys want to look up some places so the the dance complex that I actually the dance place that I go to is called Millennium Dance Complex and they have a bunch of different types of classes but they have the main one is in LA and if you've ever seen those videos this this is my last story and then we're gonna move on to the next topic <laughs> Or we're just gonna, actually, oh my gosh, whoa, we're just running out of time, what the heck? Okay, so we're just gonna cover branding, or pricing guides more specifically after this, um, if you're interested. But basically, I, I would go to this place called Millennium Dance Complex. It started in LA, and it's huge in LA. And I go to the one in Nashville, and there's one in Miami. And the classes are $10 if you get like a pass, so. Um, I got passed. <laughs> and some of them have, like, live, like, at-home classes, too. Like, the dance yes. studio I looked into has both, where you can do it from home, so. And the main thing was I was looking for, like, adult classes that, where you actually learn something, and it's not, like, a, you know, be beginner hip-hop could be beginner for five-year-olds and beginner for adults. <laughs> it's different. Um, so I wanted to look for that. But anyway, they have one in Miami. And... Um, but just a quick story about this. If you guys have not seen this, I want to send a link to you guys in the chat really quick of the type of videos that they put up. I'm telling a story about my first class. <laughs> this is great. So I was looking for a hip hop class because Sasha and I were like, let's do hip hop. And then I was like, okay, virtual class versus real class. Okay, found real place. Um, didn't know anything about Millennium Dance Complex, right? I had seen videos in the past, and especially, I, if you guys see Fuller House, Ramona from Fuller House is a huge Millennium Dance Complex dancer, and the reason I even found that was because um, I was like, is this chick even a real dancer, because she dances on the show, and she is legit a real dancer, <laughs> so um, didn't know that was called Millennium Dance Complex, I just saw the dance video, and I was like, wow, she's really good, look up, look up, uh, looks up, classes on my computer and I was like whatever dance class tonight let's go I show up it says open to all levels that was like beyond experts <laughs> the class like that was so hard I swear to you I got there first of all everyone's decked out in, in hip-hop gear and not like beginner hip-hop class hip-hop gear <laughs> like they have like bandanas they have they walk around like they're in the hip-hop community and I'm like okay well this is a little intense <laughs> so we learned this routine the routine was so hard they learned it in 15 minutes I swear to the world it was like <laughs> it was like it was 
And, and I'm like, you know, I have like a dance background. We've been going to dance classes like Sasha and I in the past. Like dance is not new to us. We're used to like learning things and executing them. So I was, I was literally like, what is even going on? So then halfway through the class, if you guys have seen this video, <laughs> these videos, um, halfway through the class, all of a sudden we bring out spotlights. There's a videographer, there's a photographer. And they're like, all right, everybody groups of three. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> I was like, groups of three, I'm still learning like the first three steps. <laughs> so it was like groups of three dancing in front of this videographer. Like, and they looked like they were gonna go perform for like JT or something. <laughs> like they had learned that routine so well with so much style in that freaking 20 minutes of like, that's so I was like, what is going on? And then, you know, so the video videographer, I'm sure it's used to shooting for, I, so I guess this is their Monday night class, which it should not say open to all levels. I was like, I need a refund. <laughs> like, this is not, this is just open to the public. It's not open to all levels. So they come up with the camera. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up really quick and send it to you guys, but, um, so yeah, I definitely did not dance in that because I was like, <laughs> so, I, but I was amazed. At least it was probably good to see. Yes, I was happy that I went that where I was like, wow, someone can get to this level where they can pick up a routine and spit it back out. And it gave me so much more respect for those videos too, because I'm thinking they rehearse together. That's their team all the time. It's just three random people in the class dancing together. Like after learning a, a routine for the first half of class. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, honestly, I mean, I, I'm glad I came back for a beginner class, but um, anyway, so I'll send you guys the, the link, but let's just wrap up on pricing guides really quick. Um, and you know what I'm saying? So tell me about pricing guides while I look up this link. Oh, I was hoping you were going to tell me about pricing guides. You wrote pricing guides on the list. You could tell me about them. <laughs> okay, so what are your questions? Like what, I mean, you've made one. So what was like something that you used as a template or um, how did you come up with the prices that you came up with or how did you like divide it up? Like what... Like obviously logo, all that stuff has different pricing, but what exactly did you put in your price guide that like most people ask for, I guess? Yes, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> um so awesome. thanks. Um, I'm not sure if not Mrs. Ruiz is still watching, but if she is, I would love to hear her input on this. Um, so just to recap a little bit, Sasha and I um are doing our own side businesses, or slash main business, it's main for me right now, but it's very, half of us, half of our business is, let me erase that, we do, okay, so we have our own side businesses, um, but other projects that we do involve design, my, my party shop has a lot of design on it, um, but every business has a lot of design aspects to it, right? So we're talking about pricing guides um, and do we need them? How do they help you? How can you? Mostly for freelancing for other companies or businesses. If you're doing that as like a side thing as an entrepreneur, which yes. we are on Upwork. So that's where it becomes more relevant. Right, so this is, we're mainly talking about Upwork right now and this could be an internal guide or an external guide that you post online. Um, I'm a big fan, even if it's, internal but I think for everything like I have one for the kids and pieces um, even though it's not something I publish online but it's it's great because it's kind of it kind of also puts into words what you even offer um, sometimes you want to say oh I can do everything well what is everything and I feel like especially from you working with Upwork clients recently where you think they know what they want and they never do <laughs> Um, yeah. Or it's hard to put you guys on the same page of what they're looking for, slash, 
you have to tell them what they're looking for because they don't know the word for it. Like we've talked about the word brochure. Like what does brochure mean? Brochure, trifold brochure, a company like lookbook online. Like that's another brochure. Is it a one pager right. that you're sending in an email blast? Like what's a brochure? <laughs> So, and a trifold is definitely different than a one pager email blast. <laughs> so, um, right. and pricing and time and all that. So, it also, so I feel like you also want to think about what you offer. So, like when I did my pricing guide, I had prices, but for website, I didn't put any pricing because that is so, a diff- that's a different ball game. But technically, I should have my own internal website pricing. Like, what, what is my minimum? Yeah. You know? Um, it also helps you filter out like, okay, website, let's say website, I'm doing someone's website for this much. If they come and say this much, sorry, I'm not on screen, this much, is that even worth it for you? You know, do you see any potential to bring them kind of up to here maybe, or even here, (laughs) ideally? Um, because you could be spending time on someone who's willing for this, you know? Um... So I know I say that, but I'm learning a lot myself to stay above. Well, I guess that like too. when I think of brochures and flyers and business cards, and even just like lead magnets and other stuff too, I lump that all together as just like marketing materials. So like, I guess my brain doesn't understand like there's one fee for brochures or one fee because I feel like. If you are working with a business owner, they're probably going to want you to do other stuff, not just a brochure. They're going to want maybe a business card or a flyer. Like, they're going to probably think of other stuff they're going to want. So that's where I think, like, the hourly thing makes sense because then you can just lump it all together, but you're still getting paid well because it is time-consuming to design it all and, like, make sure they have all the content that you need and everything else. So that was, like, one thing I thought of when it comes to, like, hourly stuff. But then I feel like you like to have set prices for different things. So I guess, in, like for your pricing guide, do you have brochure, business cards, like everything like that? Or do you just lump it all together as like marketing materials and just kind of no. one fee for that? No, no, What is marketing materials? That can be anything. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No. Like to me, it includes brochures, flyers, business cards, like everything. I think you should go by time. Right. Okay. So I'm saying if you're, if you're doing that type of thing, an hourly thing makes more sense than like a set fee for like a brochure. I just feel like no one's going to reach out to someone just to do a brochure. Like that's... What do you mean? I'm doing a brochure for this <laughs> woman <laughs> right now. But even so, I feel like hourly would make more sense because you don't know how much time you might take on it depending on if they have all the content you need or like whatever needs to be figured out in order to make it. Pause. Um, not Mrs. Ruiz. It's hard to convince people that good work is worth the pay, but I think once you convince them, the truth about how good you are spreads and people will pay up there. I do agree with that, but I do think a lot of people undersell even from the beginning. Like, yeah. let's say, whatever, I'm just going to throw out a price. Let's say 200 for a logo. I mean, I had a friend do a logo for $17, and... Maybe she was putting it to, um, you know, adding it to her, her portfolio, but she could have gotten a hundred bucks at least out of that, you know? So there's like, where that's where I think a pricing guide could help, where, um, where it's like, okay, well, where, where, where what, is, what is the lowest I'm doing here? Because people don't know. The other thing is we're assuming people know. We're in the community, right? So we're like, oh, obviously, you know, 40, Let's say average 40, 45, um, let's range it, 30 to 50 for now, as the designer hourly. Tell me, you know, it's more. (laughs) Um, But you shouldn't do less than 30, honestly, unless it's like some crazy deal you're putting together. Um, And you're doing this gig for someone for $8 an hour. That's not worth it. I don't know. Yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't yeah. know if that's just me. <laughs> I think like initially with Upwork, a lot of them are looking for cheap work. So I guess I, I went into it with that mindset of like, 
they're not gonna want to pay a lot or else they would have hired their friend that they know or like gone you know found someone on instagram and hired them that has like a reputation so i guess i was like you know cutting myself short i mean i still didn't go under 30 bucks an hour but i'm just saying like i thought of their position i guess and i was like i'd rather just get hired by them than have them pick someone else so i'll like meet them where they're at but i do think if you have a good portfolio and you already have shit to show them I mean, because Upwork does have a lot of, like, lower end, I think, like, people that are looking for just, like, quick little one-and-done projects, if you are, like, serious about what you do and more passionate and more, like, you have a good portfolio and stuff, I think people are willing to pay for that amount. Like, I've sent some proposals that just in the wording I used and in the way I presented myself, they literally wrote back, like, wow, like, you weren't even qualified, but I'm going to go with you because you you brought your A game, you know what I mean? So I do think you can choose your hourly price as long as you sell yourself the right way. Like, Well, that's what I think it's selling. It's not so much like, okay, like we were talking about, it's that we're making a logo, for example. The logo itself may not be even that hard. It may be all text, you know, change a little thing here and there, whatever. It might not even have like a little icon. But what you're selling is reliability, convenience, the fact that they can trust you, come back for more. Do you understand their brand now? I feel like understanding the brand or cre- like you said, the logo is the beginning of their brand, right? So if you are already taking the time, because you can't just make a logo. You have to understand what they want, that where the brand is going, the colors, the fonts, whatever. And if you're already taking the time to do that, that's so much value to them. You're giving them their brand. I mean, that to me is worth fifty dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I feel like if you're just like, yeah, I'm making you a little whole logo. Ha <laughs> ha. I think too, like, we're not just being paid for our time. We're also being paid because we have the program that they don't have. We understand how to use the program that they don't understand how to use. Like, we have expertise that they don't have. So they're paying not just for like what we're delivering to them but also like like our expertise and our actual like know-how and i mean to some extent like how can you put a price on that you know what i mean depending on if you're a c level at what you're what program you're using or if you're an a level but most of the time they may not even know the difference or Mm -hmm. um to them your work might just stand out a lot and be a way to them so it's like and i think as artists or as creatives I think we kind of like judge ourselves or we're just like oh we're not perfect or we're not like amazing at this or that Mm -hmm. so we kind of like downplay what we do but just to an outsider I think it does look exceptional like I think it does look like whoa like how did they even do that yeah um so I think like you have to envision them receiving the end result and if you feel like they're going to be wowed then fucking show that yeah (laughs) In your proposal or in what you tell them, like, just own the confidence, I guess, back to what we were saying with, like, how confidence is, like, half of it, if not more. Right. Um, and I think other people realize that, too. Not Mrs. Ruiz agrees. <laughs> she also says something else, but finish what you were saying. That was it. That was oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, so, off of what you're saying and off of what she's saying, um, I've never heard of a pricing guide. I'm interested in how it would look, but I think it would help. It's almost like subscriptions. They lay out what they lay out what you get as you rise in tiers. So I know for Upwork, um, you've done the milestones. Basically, like you complete it, like you set the milestones. If you complete this, um, then you move on to the next thing, and maybe they pay you for each milestone, right? Um, so that's obviously one way. But even internally, okay. So externally, if you don't want to put a, a price to it. Um, Let's say, so the thing is like, I feel like you have to think in the mind of the person. So let's say a logo takes you five hours, right? Whatever, minimum Wait, five hours. Can I say something first? Yes, go. Just like context. Kat had an external client reach out to her because she made something already that they saw and they loved and they were like, I want her to do my logo. So they reached out to her because they already saw something of her portfolio and liked it and wanted to work with her. I have only done Upwork stuff, so I'm getting clients from that platform only where there's like more competition, other people are applying, whatever. So I don't have a pricing guide because it's just my proposal, essentially. What? 
No, that wasn't you. <laughs> oh. You need the app. So, so Kat had a pricing guide made because her client was, you know, direct. It was just her and that person. And so she had different prices. That way, if a person's just coming to her for a logo, they now see her pricing guide and they see she does other stuff. And then it puts it in their head like, oh, well, I might need a brochure too. Or I might need. So I think it helps to potentially build on what the client's reaching out for you to do anyway. Like you might get more stuff from that client if you have a pricing guide. Um, so I think it helps that way. And then I also thought like it might look more professional where even if I'm on Upwork, if I did have a pricing guide that I could just attach, like let's say I reached out to a client, all they wanted was a logo or some program design, but I also do website stuff. They'll see it on that guide and be like, oh, I was thinking of doing that. And if I like what this person does now, I can just hire them for that too. So I think it helps potentially to like get more work from that person if you right. have a pricing guide. I just thought of that, but like, so to um, to add to that, if you do an hourly price, because for mine, I gave her package pricing because it was like a friend and friend or whatever. Um, but if you do hourly, you can always put starting at, or even if you give them a, a, okay, because sometimes, for example, let's say you take, you do $40 an hour, five hours for a logo minimum, right? So you can put starting at 200, which to me, it depends on how you want to do it. But to me, if I see starting at $200 for a logo, that is not that bad to me. Whereas if I see maybe $40 an hour, I'm like, holy crap, I don't even make $40 an hour. How am I gonna pay you $40 an hour? I don't know, it depends. Maybe 40 is a lower number. I don't know, it just depends on who you're, you gotta know like your clients, you know? But even internally, I think, for example, you should do, let's say you'll do it for 200, start like you're like okay I'll do a logo for 200 if someone comes at $50 yeah I don't know it, it's honestly just not worth it not not to say like it's not worth it but if you maybe wait a day you might get someone who would pay even 150 yeah. that's so right, right. <laughs> but whatever so like yeah sorry I think when it comes to the set pricing, I, in my head, I think to myself, like, how long would it take me to make a logo, including revisions and changes and things they might not like. And I, I do, like, in my head, what's the maximum amount of time I would take on logo, which, you know, could be fucking six hours if a person's like, I like this, but I don't like that. Like, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So I tell myself, like, what would my ideal hourly rate be? And then what would my max time be? And then that could be, like, a way to come up with the set price for a logo for what you think your time's worth and how long it might take. Or you could just do the hourly thing, but like i been saying, like, you're not sure how that might look to the client, too. Right. But then I think also if you put 200, starting at 200, minimum, you're making 200, regardless yeah. of how easy or difficult this logo is. Yeah, even if it takes an hour or two hours. Right. But then you're saving yourself where if it takes longer <laughs> and then you could write under hourly uh, additional hours or whatever, you know, you could put something else. But basically, I don't know if you watched that video that I said, but I'm going to post it in the chat now um, of how to communicate with a client about pricing. It's about film make, like for videographers, but I think it applies to us too, where you have to kind of set the bar like they don't know the bar you set the bar but um you know and obviously like, most programs, like the adobe programs are scary to people like yeah <laughs> even photoshop is like so even i mean we think it's like super simple we're just like oh what the fuck's a big deal it's just photoshop but it is a big deal and it costs money also to have those programs like so those are things you have to think of too i mean even though it's like to us it's nothing like to the other people it's a lot um, but what's, what's on your pricing guide? Not the, you don't have to say like the, the prices, but how did you break yours up? Like what do you have on yours? I broke it up based on what I'm best at and what I think they would offer. So a combination of that. So most likely logo. Um, I broke, I've had this in the past where it's social media graphic. Um, social media graphic slash like a one pager, like whatever, something like this like a five by seven or a little square type thing. Um, 
where they're like quicker turnaround, simple things that's not like loaded with company info, you know, maybe they're promoting it. So I'll write like either a feature flyer or an event flyer, kind of like that. Um, then there's stuff that's for print too, which takes a little bit more work. Um, you know, digital, you can just, it's so much easier to like add a link, make it clear, but like print, you have to make sure they can see where you want them to go or like the action is like so much more important. Um, or the first page has to be really captivating or they're just going to go. Um, and they'll have that forever. Like they can reprint that over and over and over. They so can reprint it. Like yeah. I mean, I guess the digital one, they can repost over and over um, too. Um, so yeah, I'll have, I have like a print pricing and then like, um, I'll have, I have company, company, like company brochure. I forgot what I wrote, but basically things about the company, like, so if you need like a lookbook, um, or, um, a, a brochure, like an e-brochure of maybe that's like five pages of your company. So then I'll, for me, um, that has a minimum starting price because it's like already so much information that I probably need to include for their company. But then for additional pages, I charge that way. I'm sure other people do it differently. So if you guys have any ideas on, um, how you like to charge for multi-page items. Um, and then to me, it's like always saving your butt. So I know you think of like the maximum hours So the maximum hours is good, but I think you should also think of the minimum that you need to get their thing to them. Like yeah. if they ask for a company brochure, you're not going to give them a half page thing with a bio. Like, <laughs> like you gotta make yourself look good too. <laughs> I think it helps. I think what you are saying helps also to guide the client because yes. they might not know what category yes. they're asking for, and but they just know they need a lead magnet and they don't understand like what category that might fall under. So I think as a graphic designer, you can kind of be like, okay, well that is considered this, so it'd be this price, and that way if they want you to do something else in addition. You could be like, okay, well, that's under this category, which right. is this. Cause, like, it just starts the pricing out. better. Yes. Because, like, the, the lady that hired me to do her, like, uh, online program thing, I don't know what to call it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was just going to be designing that program. All the content was done, everything else. But now I'm basically building it for her. There was no content, really. Um, so I guess, like, it would have helped me if I had a pricing guide because I would have been like, okay, well, that's a different price. Like, if I'm not just designing something, but I'm, like, creating something, that's totally different. Right. So I think it could help them kind of see it as, like, you already have it written up, you already have it established, like, your pricing guide. So that's kind of just, like, your little, like, rule book <laughs> yeah. that they have to go by <laughs> if they want your service. So I think it helps for that reason, too, like, if they're not sure what they're asking for. I, yeah, and then it, it also has them using the same terminology as you. Yeah. So yeah. if you set yes. it up from the beginning, I mean, definitely, it's also, are you out of their budget, you know? Um, I guess mm -hmm. I get this a lot from weddings, and honestly, for me, weddings are one of the things that people know the least about, yet they want a fairy tale wedding. Not everybody, but, you know, some people have this, like, oh, my gosh, I want the wedding of my dreams. I don't know where to start. So you... At least for me, when I was in catering, as, whether I'm a caterer or a planner or the hotel, you need to set their expectations. You know, not everybody knows that, okay, they might know food and the venue is the most expensive, but they might not know photography is probably the next expensive, next to flowers. Like, yeah. how are they going to know that yeah. if you don't tell them, you know? And then they're not setting realistic expectations, so you need to tell them <laughs> what they're looking for. Um, and yeah, you really do. And yeah, it sets, I think, a standard. Because let's say maybe you don't have enough money right now to do a brochure, but you know how much she charges. So, oh, maybe my next paycheck, I'll get my money, I can pay for the brochure. Then she comes back to you with a brochure. Like, so that you're not here, like, oh, well, maybe I can do it for this one. Oh. Well, I think it, like, instead of you looking like a single individual that just does graphic design stuff, you look like you're a business. Like, it just, to me, has, like, a more formal professional presentation when you have a brand guide because that's, like, 
you've had clients, they've paid you this amount, and that's your set thing, and that's why you're sharing it with that client. So I think it just looks more like credible and respectable just to have it. I don't have one, so I'm not fucking, <laughs> I'm thinking of having one because of when Kat showed me hers. Um, I don't know how it would work on Upwork, you know what I mean? I was you might not post it. Right, but like if you're working with a client, you could just send it to them as a file. Yeah. Like, hey, this is, you know, whatever it is. If you need any uh, future. You have to match your proposal. Um, yeah. And I might include like hourly instead. Like, you yeah. can still have, I think, a pricing guide and just do hourly for each thing. But I think what Kat mentioned about like starting with what you're good at and what you would like to work on or what you would want to offer and then like breaking it down from there in terms of like what you think your time is worth and. Right, and then let's say, for example, you do the website and they need, you know, a lot of SEO or metadata, like all this other stuff. You can know, and you're internally, you're like, I don't do that. So you don't waste your time trying to spend three hours Googling and learning about SEO. It's a whole other ball game, you know? It's better to know someone so that are further. And they know you're not going to do that. Yeah. And they know, yeah, and they know they're not, you're not going to do that. So that you're not like, I need to go learn every single aspect of this and it's going to be horrible. <laughs> It's gonna be like a deep. No, that's a good point. Like, someone could hire you to make a website for them and think it's supposed to be like the first thing searched whenever someone types in whatever it is. When it's like, no, you just know how to design a website. You don't necessarily know all the like SEO stuff and like back end optimization. So that's a good point. Yeah. Also, I think the last thing about this for me is um, I've also been Chris with working with Chris here on his live stream stuff um, and. It, um, for those of you who don't know, um, Chris is my human, and he has um, a live stream that's like a weekly live concert, but he also works with his um, best friend on it, and they, at his best friend's studio, and, um, you know, they'll have people asking about live, uh, how much would you charge to live stream this for me, for my own, as an art, like an artist will ask them how much they would charge to live stream, or an artist will ask them, hey, can you record this track for me, and, Every time they're like, oh, how much are we going to charge for this? Oh, and then the two of them have to agree on a price. And then, oh, no, but it's a friend. So let's lower it a little bit. Like, right. if you just have a freaking minimum, you know, you can let the friend quote yeah. or you can quote without having to freaking check in with your friend every time. Oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe this. How annoying. Hello. I just want to like be like, it's this much and go watch Netflix. Like, <laughs> like why is this such a huge deal? And like, then you're saving your energy right. for the clients where you do need to make custom proposals for. Um, I just submitted, I just sent the link in the chat of this video that I watched for the filmmaker. Honestly, he, they, the reason I like it is because it's not like a one, two, three on how to quote a client. He does like, a, it's, it's fake because it's with his friend, but it's as if he's talking to a client and how he would handle a situation when a client is super under quoting him. Like he's like charging fifteen hundred for film, or sorry, to for videography, and the client was like seven hundred or something, and you're like, how do I get you to a little bit higher than that? Um, so definitely a cool watch. It's like eighteen minutes, but um, if you just skip to the, I mean, I like the whole thing, but if you just skip to the um, client interaction part, that part's pretty cool. But yes, I definitely recommend it. I posted it. I like lost it. Oh yeah, okay, let me post it again. But anyway, so that's pretty much pricing guides. Um, oh yay, not Mrs. Ruiz. This has been very informative. I suck at the money part, but I have someone starting a business that I will share that link with. Yes, it honestly, I've watched a lot of like stupid videos where it's like, do this, how you should do things. And I just need, the, that's the video where I just stopped watching more videos because I was like, this is perfect. Um, so anyway, that's it on pricing guides. We I recommend it even if it's an internal one so that you can save time. Saving time. That's all, that's all it's about. Um, and I think next, we, covered everything. we did cover everything. I know. So this time we were super organized team. Just to let you know that we're also trying to figure out life. We are not experts. That's why we welcome all your comments and we want them. <laughs> Um, even if you're like, you guys are wrong, <laughs> that's not how this works. Um, we just want this to be a very open side hustle entrepreneurial format. Um, okay, I'm ruining my speech. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything she said. Yes, yes. 
Um, Sasha's moving out of her RV in a couple weeks, um, but next week we will be here together with a holiday. I mean, it's an early holiday because we're doing a photo shoot, but a holiday um, stream. And we hope to hear all your questions. So definitely um, email us if you have other questions at asksashaandthecat at gmail.com. Um, uh, or tune in next Monday around the same time. It should be 11 a.m. Eastern. And I promise we'll start getting better at <laughs> um, more overlays because I learned more about Twitch. Um, and we did have a, an agenda today, so we are improving. Look at us. <laughs> Improvement. Next week, we'll hopefully, we we'll have overlays. On, <laughs> we didn't touch on the funding. Oh, yeah. I think that we should save that for another time. So maybe next time we'll talk about financials. Okay. Um, in terms of having um, startup costs and things to think about every month. Um, Sasha knows a lot about uh, P&Ls, profit and loss statements. And she also is on QuickBooks, which is something I want to learn about. So today was a little cat heavy talking, but next time we're going to hear a lot about funding from Sasha. <laughs> um, and again, if you have any acupuncture questions, um, business questions, side business questions, I need someone to double check my logo, does this look stupid? Um, party kit stuff, hospitality questions, design questions, how's Nashville, how's Ohio? Ohio, we're here. <laughs> um, yeah, Sasha, anything to add before we go? It's 11 a.m. Eastern. Everything. Sorry, I'm just ask, answering your question really, not Mrs. Ruiz's question really quick. Um, uh, uh, sorry, my alarm. Do you alarm. think we should do 12 p.m.? Do you think we should do 12 p.m.? So today we went on at 11.30 EST. But I feel like people tune in after 12, so I wasn't sure if we should just start at 12. I think we should start at the same time because it just takes a while for these videos to, like, pop up on Twitch as I've been learning. <laughs> um, okay. Oh! Now Mrs. Ruiz is still waiting for that ASMR. Sasha did add that to her list, by the way. Legit, I saw it. <laughs> Once you say something, it's like in her mind. It. Huh? I don't know how to do it. Like, I need a microphone. I would need something like super. Why don't you do a Zoom call one time on Twitch with not Mrs. Ruiz? Unless not Mrs. Ruiz doesn't want to be in it and just wants to communicate, but you can try it. Yeah, that's true. Earthquake? I was thinking too, like whenever you do ear points, like when you put the needle in and the needle comes out, it like scrapes the plastic tube that like helps you guide where the needle goes. And you can hear, no, it sounds so cool. Like literally it's just like zoop. It sounds like a zipper almost. It just sounds so you cool. You need a mic. Like, God, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, I need a mic. I'm just gonna buy a mic, fuck it. No, I have a mic. Take my mic. I have an extra mic. We have like 15 mics, but I have an old mic. <laughs> Actually, I have like a few mics because you know I used to karaoke. <laughs> I will buy them from you. Um, no, consider them, consider it a Christmas present because Chris rejected my mic. <laughs> I was like, oh, rude. <laughs> He's like, this isn't good enough. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to give it to someone who will now put it next to someone else's ear and get sound effects out of it. <laughs> I will take um, them. <laughs> they sell special mics. Dude, can you get the app next? <laughs> can you send me a link to this to, for the for this? Not Mrs. Reese. Oh yes, if you have a link for a special mic. But in the meantime, or email it to us or something. I don't know. Yay! No, gotta get rid of this random person. <laughs> <laughs> Can I flip them off? Is that illegal to do on Twitch? So definitely gonna make Felipe a moderator next time. Yeah, let's work on that. Yes. Um, we are not a porn site. Just letting everyone know. Oh. Anyway. All right. We should head out. But thanks for watching, team. We'll be back next week. We love your questions and comments. And email us anything at Ask Sasha and the Cat. Bye. I don't know if I ended it. <laughs> Every time, bro. <laughs> Bye.
Wait, I gotta take it out of full screen. I think so. Okay, there you go.